Sugar and carbohydrate cravings can flat out make life difficult and, and make you do some crazy stuff. You know, maybe you've threatened to punch somebody in the neck if they don't give you that cookie. Or even worse, maybe you followed your four-year-old child around the house trying to help them find their missing candy bar that you know for a fact that you ate last night while they were sleeping. Really, cravings can be brutal, and we all know that. What a lot of people don't know is that your digestive symptoms could be causing that cravings. So in this video, you're going to understand why, and if you stick around till the end, you're going to understand how you can stop those cravings fast. <laughs> With mackerel, this is going to be a huge piece of information for you. Stick around. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Let me know in the comments right now what you crave the most and, and when those cravings are the strongest. Because most people think that they, oh man, I just don't have any willpower or, or I'm a chocolate-holic. Like it's some type of personality disorder, but that's not what's going on. Cravings are a physiological signal that your body is sending you to let you know that something is going wrong. The body needs something that it's not getting. Here's how it works. The body needs both minerals and glucose for a wide variety of functions. And if a person's minerals go too low, they can have a seizure, which is basically the whole body shutting down. And if a person's glucose goes too low, that person can have a seizure. But if both minerals and glucose go low at the same time, it's even more likely that they'll have a seizure. This can actually be the underlying drive behind cravings for a lot of people. Now, that doesn't mean that you're like, oh man, I gotta get me some Oreo cookies. I, I must be about to have a seizure. That's, that's not how it works. The body just gets a little bit defensive about seizures way ahead of time. It gets defensive about not having enough resources that it's gonna shut the whole system down. And it plans way in advance. And it sends that signal like, hey, go get me something way before an actual problem is going to show up. But what's important for us to understand is that minerals and glucose can both buffer each other. If minerals are too low, you can buffer those low minerals by raising glucose levels. You eat some carbohydrates or some sugar and it buffers those low minerals and the system works okay. Same thing with glucose. If it goes too low, you can buffer that by raising minerals and everything is fine. So the real trouble happens when someone has both minerals and glucose going low at the same time. That's why nobody has cravings while they have a donut in their mouth. They're getting access to that immediate sugar right away. It buffers any low mineral issues and they're okay. But that's why when minerals or glucose or both are going low, the body will send a signal for either something sweet or something that has carbs in it or something salty, something that it can get minerals from. Different people will crave different things, but that's what the body is trying to do. It's just trying to make up for some type of deficit. And whether it's buffering the low minerals or buffering the low glucose, it's just saying, hey, you got to get me something to take care of this low resource issue. So if minerals are too low, the best way to keep the body from screaming for carbs and sugars all day is to raise those mineral levels. Now you have that buffer. When blood sugar goes a little bit low, the minerals are there to help the body from saying, hey, I'm gonna freak out here if you don't give me some french fries. That can be the difference between two friends who eat pretty much the same way, but one gets crazy insane cravings and the other has no cravings. The one with no cravings has enough mineral in the system to buffer everything when glucose goes too low. Now minerals can go low for a wide variety of reasons, but the most common problem is digestive malfunctions. So it's not that your digestive symptoms are actually causing your cravings. You know, the act of not pooping for a week doesn't make you want vanilla wafers, but the underlying cause of your digestive symptoms does have the ability to create a lot of problems because a lot of times those underlying causes are digestive malfunctions that are restricting your ability to access the nutrients in the food that you're eating. Like, we don't eat food just so we have something to do while we're watching Cobra Kai. We eat food to access the vitamins, the minerals, the amino acids, the fats, all those nutrients that are in that food. That's why we do that. The body needs those things for a lot of functions that it has. Now, to understand this, I'm going to explain the two main sides of digestion. So, first of all, when we eat, our stomachs make hydrochloric acid, or HCl. And this stomach acid helps us start to break that food down. It fully acidifies that food so it can break it down. 
Now once this acidic product leaves the stomach, it goes into the duodenum, which is the first 10 inches of the small intestine. Now once it's there, the gallbladder will squirt this alkaline bile down onto the acidic product that just left the stomach. So when two opposite pHs meet like this, alkaline bile, acidic from the stomach, it creates this sizzle. This sizzle is what helps us bust that food apart and pull all the nutrients out of that food. So when either side of digestion is not working correctly, then we don't get this sizzle. We don't have the ability to fully pull all the nutrients out of that food. And the problem is that a lot of people don't have their stomach acid working correctly. They're not making enough stomach acid. That can happen for a wide variety of reasons and it's extremely common. The other side of the problem is that a lot of people have their bile too thick and sticky for it to flow correctly. It gets kind of stuck and it doesn't come down there and neutralize the acids leaving the stomach so that sizzle doesn't happen. Doesn't that make sense that if, if a person ate a cheeseburger and their digestion was only able to get 10% of the nutrients out of that cheeseburger that the body would be like, hey, well, I, I need more cheeseburgers. Give me something else. You got any nachos? Give me that. It's going to scream for more when the digestive process isn't doing what it's telling the body it's going to do. You got to get the nutrients out of the food you're eating. Another aspect is that if you can't pull all the minerals out of the food that you're eating, your body is going to scream for more carbs and sugars because these are easier to break down when digestion isn't working optimally. You know, a Pop-Tart is easy to break down. It's kind of already just chemicals and processed stuff that is practically digested by the time you eat it. So your body will scream for this process, easy to break down carbs, sugars, carbohydrates, that kind of stuff so that it can just get a fuel to buffer the low minerals that are going on. Now, if you can help your body break proteins down correctly and get the nutrients out of that and emulsify fats the way that bile can and get fuel out of there, then your body doesn't scream so much for all these carbs and junk. Now, there are other issues that can magnify these cravings as well. Some people have insulin that's kind of like a bullet. Like it overpowers the glucose and sweeps it out of the bloodstream too much too quickly and then that sugar crashes too hard. Now those glucose levels are too low. So if a person doesn't have enough minerals to buffer that, their cravings are going to be insane. So we have a free four week digestion course where we teach you how to look at simple self tests that you can run at home with tools that you can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store. And you can get an idea if your insulin may be a big bully and, and maybe you're having some sugar spikes and crashes. So if this is you, then you can change the way that you're eating and maybe reduce some of these really high carbohydrate meals that you're having so that you don't get such a huge spike and crash. It's in the crash that the real trouble happens. You can also help to improve that imbalance so that your insulin isn't so overly effective every time you eat carbohydrates or sugars. We also teach you in that free course how to look at your electrolyte levels. Do minerals appear to be too low? If so, you could supplement with some minerals and that could lift the system a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be quite as effective as when you can fix the digestive malfunctions and then pull the minerals out of the food you're eating. You're eating the food anyways. Why don't you get the benefit out of the food that you're eating? So in that free course, we teach you how to look at your digestion and figure out if there's aspects that aren't working so great, and if there are, steps you can take to improve that. But one secret you could do right now if you feel like mineral levels might be low is that you could increase the amount of unrefined salt that you're using. You know, our Uncle Bill had his doctor tell him that salt was going to kill him, so now we're all afraid of salt all of a sudden. And salt may have been bad for Uncle Bill, but that doesn't mean it's bad for all people. Most of us really need salt. And the problem is that when we're using salt, if we're just using table salt, we're not getting a lot of minerals. That's just a processed salt. But if you can use an unrefined salt, like a sea salt or a mine salt, then you get other minerals and other mineral cofactors that the body really needs. So you really want to use a salt like this. And if your cravings are really bad, there's one salt by Celtic Sea Salt called the Flower of the Ocean that seems to work uh, a lot better. It may contain more minerals and mineral cofactors, but it seems to get the best results. So if you're having severe cravings, you could take some sea salt or unrefined salt and you could just put a little dab on your tongue and see if that helps you feel a little better. Basically, it's sending the signal to the body that's like, hey, here comes some minerals. Don't, don't freak out about needing carbs so much because I got these minerals you can use to buffer that a little bit. Now this is usually just going to be a temporary fix, but it might help you avoid some 
crazy binge episodes or some choices that might not be optimal and you might regret a few hours later. So why not have that in your back pocket when you need it? But fixing the underlying cause of your cravings is the best way for lasting results. You really want to fix digestion. If you're having any type of digestive symptoms, you want to correct the underlying cause until that symptom isn't there anymore. That's a strong sign that you're able to break down your food better and pull more minerals out of your food. And it's not real hard to do. I've had clients that were seeing a therapist three days a week for over 10 years just for their cravings. And once they fix digestion, huh, that's kind of weird. All of a sudden, I don't need to go to the therapist anymore. Well, that's because you fix the underlying cause. Now, that doesn't mean that there's no benefit to therapy, but what I want you to understand is that no matter how significant your cravings or binge eating episodes are, you can fix those if you help the body get what it's trying to tell you that it needs. Now, I'll put a link to that flower of the ocean sea salt in the description below if you want to try that out, but what you really want to do is fix any underlying digestive issues. So we'll have the link in the description for our free four-week digestion course so you can walk through that course and figure out what's going wrong with your digestion and understand the steps that you can take to make it better. But for now, to understand digestion a little bit better, watch our Digestive Troubles Explained video and that'll give you a little bit more insights. Don't forget to click on the like and subscribe button and bing that bell thing so that you're notified when we come out with more craving videos and such. I can't wait to hear about your results.